soy Javier Batis, vivo en mi calle, la calle se llama Javier Batis, y soy un personaje icónico de la ciudad de Tijuana. Aquí nací en esta casa el 3 de junio de 1944, o sea que voy a la edad de los grandes, como Mick Jagger, <risa> y me la estoy pasando muy bien. Javier Batis tiene una historia muy grande, ahorita se las platico una parte. When I started playing, I was 12 years old. When I started playing, not that I played really good, which I did. My childhood friends, I taught them how to play. I formed a group called the TJs. And uh, it was wonderful because we had the, the radio stations play the music. And on a Tuesday, in Daddy's Home, the song would come out. And by Friday, I would be singing it, you know. And it was really cool because I speak English. And uh, I, I, used, I used to learn the words. I have a really good memory still. A lot of guys singing English here in Tijuana, but they didn't know the language. So they were going like, baby. And it was, what? And so the pe people really accepted that I, I, I took the, the time to learn the songs and, and, and really deliver them like, uh, like they were supposed to. The Majestics, they were really good. And the TJs, we were better because every time we went over there to battle the bands, we won. Every time, because we were kids, man, and playing really good. You mentioned you have students back then, but you had a student of Carlos Santana. How was that, having him as a student? Carlos, I was playing in the park uh, in 1957. So one day, uh, Carlos's mama, she heard me play. And when she heard me, she went and got her kid and brought him over and told, and told him, this is some guy you, you have to hear. And she was right, man. The guy, <laughs> the guy heard me and said he lost it. He go, oh, man. I want to play the guitar like him for the rest of my life. So I, ta I taught him how to play a couple of little things. <laughs> and then he went home. It was a Sunday. On the Monday, his mama told me, you know what, what? My son didn't sleep at all last night because of your fault. <laughs> and and, and I, I said, well, Carlos, que hiciste con... Mira, aprendí esto, lo que me enseñaste, me dijo. Pero también saqué esto y... Man, he was real. He's a genius. I mean, come on. So he did all this stuff at home, man. And we became friends from that day and up to here. Like, let me tell you a fact, a fact. Two Mexicans played at the Woodstock Fest Festival, right? Fito de la Parra and Carlos Santana, and both of them came out of my group. <laughs> it's, it's Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I have a studio right here on the side. A little, a little room I call the studio. And there's 12, 15 people there learning how to play the guitar like me. I teach how to play the guitar like me. I don't teach how to play the guitar. I don't teach how to play like Metallica. I teach how to play like me because I'm an individual. And so the guys who learn how to play the guitar like me, then they learn how to play the guitar like them, each and every one of them. Why did you pick up the guitar? Uh, because my uh, my parents told me to my parents told me to pick it up, but then like I started liking it more and more. I don't 
I don't love to, to, to talk about me with what I've done, but I've done a lot, man. When I got to Mexico City in 1963, they heard me play, and all of the groups that were my idols, man, like the Los Rebeldes, Los Tim Tops, and all those guys, they, they broke up because they couldn't play what I was playing, which was pure and simple rock and roll with rhythm and blues. The music changed forever, forever. And so I've been doing that all around the country. I changed the music in the country with the Tijuana sound of Javier Batis. But now, and that was in the country of Mexico. Now it's in the world because of the, of the documentary yeah, that Netflix that. pulled out, man. That Rompan Todo. I mean, those guys, they put the country, Chile, you know, Argentina, Tijuana, not Mexico, Tijuana. And that is what I got from it. So if you ask me what I've done, I've done so much. You know, people think that by making a lot of money or being really recognized, that's it. No, that's not it. First of all, I care too much about the homeless. I wanna bring, I wanna bring comfort and and well-being to the old people, you know, and uh, and, and teach the, the bunch of kids the music that is not played right now in no radios, nowhere. You know, rhythm and blues. The singers like Bobby Bland, T-Bone Walker, Ray Charles. B.B. King, all this, all these musicians, these beautiful musicians, the beautiful music. Nobody knows that music, you know, the, the, the generations, the new generations. This is a new generation, man. You gotta play for them, you know. <laughs> De viejito, tengo 78 años. Porque es un deleite la música. Si dejas la música, te mueres si eres músico. Y oye, so I don't want to leave. I'm not going nowhere. I want to say that don't lose the faith. And dale gracias a Dios por todo lo que tienes y todo lo que eres y todo lo que haces. Si pierdes eso, no vas a tener nada, nunca, nada que valga la pena. So, with those words, yeah. <laughs>